Okay, we got wall number two plates, 120 inches, sitting down here on our red line. I'm going to show you quickly how to lay this plate out. Um, simply hook on to the end of wall number two, pull your tape out, and we're going to do that 15 and a quarter. Remember I told you, remember 15 and a quarter, we're going to be using that a lot. That's always going to be our first mark. Uh, wall number two, we're going to come down here 15 and a quarter, make our cross foot, set ahead, and now we can either take the end of our tape and put it on the, on that mark and go every 16 inches, or we can find the 16 inch marks and come back three quarters. So I'm going to do that this time. So 32 would be my next one, back three quarters is 31 and a quarter. 48 is my next, back three quarters would be 47 and a quarter. So just find the red marks and come back three quarters of an inch. That's all I'm doing here. Alright, and just to prove my point there, we could have did it the other way. We could have put we could have put the end of my tape on the 15 and a quarter mark. And if you notice here, there's a, a crow's foot at every one of the red marks. 16, 32, 48, 64, 80, and 96. So whichever way you want to do it. So it's the exact same thing. Now you can see I don't I don't have 16 inches to my next one. I only have nine inches for my last mark, so we'll just put one on the end. Okay? That's all you do. Just put one on the end. Alright, so then we're going to take our plates, stack them beside each other. Take our speed square, and we're just going to duplicate all these marks on the green plate. Okay, on the end. Alright. Set ahead. Set ahead. Remember, you're always setting your X's ahead. Ahead is always the direction that you're pulling your tape. Squaring them right across. Nice. Working the green one. All right, so they're all laid out. So that was a much easier wall to figure out than our first wall. Now what you want to do is the same thing again. You want to stack your plates. Make sure you're on your red line. The whole way down. And then you want to measure your studs. Now, as you recall, we put cats in up here because we didn't have any studs. All right. So we're going to be measuring up to the bottom of our cats. All right, let's check out this one here. We got 90 and 5 eighths. We'll subtract an eighth. That gives me 90 and a half. 90 and 5 eighths. Subtract an eighth. 90 and a half. And we got 90 and 5 eighths. Subtract an eighth. 90 and a half. So we just we ran into a situation where we have all the same lengths again. Now, we got our first obstacle. Oh no. What are we going to do? There's, there's a piece of steel up here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to notch our wall around this steel. Okay? So, I'm going to build the walls if there was no steel there. And then I'm going to measure up to the bottom of the steel and I'm going to make some adjustments to the wall after we build it. So Mark, cut me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them at 90 and a half. Okay, we got all of our studs cut, checked for all of our backs, and we got them all on the wall ready to, ready to nail together here. So we're going to go ahead and take the nail gun and do the exact same thing again. We're starting on the bottom plate again. We're going to nail them all to the line, cover the X, pull the wall back, nail the top plate, 
And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do about this piece of steel over here and how we're going to be able to stand our wall up and go right around that piece of steel. Our wall nailed together. Um, we've got this obstacle in the way because our, our wall is coming all the way out to here, which means it's past the steel about a foot or so. So the steel is squarely in our top plate. So what we're going to do is we're going to notch out our top plate. In order to do that, we need some measurements. So uh, Mark, if you want to hold me down there. Um, up about even with the bottom of this steel right about there and what we're going to do is we're going to measure over here off of our wall where, where this wall number two is going to butt up against and we're going to get the steel measurements here so as you can see there I got 106 to 110 because it's a four inch piece of steel so we don't want to be exact because we're not going to see any of this this is framing so let's make it a little bit bigger so we don't we don't squeeze ourselves in there too tight. So we'll go 105 and a half to 110 and a half. 105 and a half to 110 and a half. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to our top plate and we're going to hook on the end and we're going to come down the top plate those measurements. 105 and a half. Take a mark here to 110 and a half. And you see we're so close to this other stud here that I think I'm just going to use that stud as the other side. So instead of going 110 and a half, this measure is 111. We'll just go right over to this stud. We'll just cut that whole section out right there. All right, so we're going to be taking out this piece of 2 by 4 right here, all right? But before we do that, when we cut that out, that's going, to, that's going to separate this section of the wall from the rest of the wall. There's going to be a hole here in the middle. So to stiffen that up, we're going to cut a piece of 2 by 4 in between these two studs, all right? Because our cutout resides between these two studs. All right, so we're going to cut a piece of 2 by 4 between here, and that's going to be 14 and 3 eighths. So Mark's going to cut me a chunk 14 and 3 eighths inches. Now, we need one more measurement to do this. We need the measurement off the floor to the bottom of the steel. So let's measure up there and see what that is. And that looks like 84 inches. So we'll give ourselves a little little play there. We'll go 83 and three quarters. All right, so we're not too tight. And we're gonna hook on the bottom of our wall, which represents the concrete floor, because that's gonna be sitting on the floor down there. And we're gonna come up 83 and three quarters on this, on this stud. and 83 and 3 quarters on this stud. And we're going to set down. All right, and that's where we're going to position this block of wood that Mark just cut me. Right. Nail that right in there like that. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to be using some more of our power tools here. And remember at the beginning of the video when I showed you all the tools you were going to need to frame, the circular saw was one of the tools, all right? And, and this is one of those instances when you're going to be using your circular saw. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our blade to full depth. You can see that's about two and a half inches of full depth. 
that that blade sticks out there. All right, we're going to lock it in there. That's the, that's as deep as this saw will cut. Now you might want to get some help with this. It's always nice to have another person lift your wall up for you so that you can cut this out. And right where my lines are over here, I'm going to take my speed square and I'm going to I'm going to square this up here so I know where to cut right on these marks I just made, the 105 and a half and the 111. And we're going to be cutting that chunk out there. And that's where the steel will go. We're going to go ahead and cut that out. Just going to run our circular saw right down them lines. Okay, now me and Mark are going to grab this wall, number two, just like we did wall number one, and we're going to slide it up and into position, and hopefully that notch will go around that piece of steel. So you can see how our block of 2 by 4 is right up to the steel and our notch went right around our right around our project up there. All right, so anytime you've got a pipe or a piece of steel, you're still going to be able to build your wall on the floor and make these notches. I mean, this could have been, you know, a 2 foot wide piece of this ductwork right here that we were notching around. Whatever it is, we would have just made our our measurements off the opposing wall, cut our top plate out, and then put our blocking in. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and get this on the line and blast it to the floor. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to shoot the bottom first. Okay, so we're going to shoot the floor first, about every four foot, starting in the corner, in the middle of the stud. One more out here on the end. Okay. All right, now, um, if we did our job right, we should just be able to come over here in the corner and get our corner on the red line that's up there that we snapped after we plumb bobbed. And we can nail this whole corner up. Now, you see how this wall slides in right against that nice three and a half inch two by four we put in there our nailer we can nail right through this wall number two right into that nailer wall number one which is what I'm going to do right now grab my gun all right and we want to stay on our red line right there and we can go right down and shoot that up every two foot. All right, that locks the corner in. Now the rest of the top of the wall we're going to nail up into our cats. Out a little bit. All right, there. And our next one is right there. Now here on the end, our next wall will tie into this corner here. All right, so that's. Now you notice that I didn't put the uh, the level 
on the inside of the two bys to check it to see if it's racked because I know it won't be racked because this wall was already set perfectly plumb and this wall is right up against it so we know that we're, we're not going to be racked. Generally you only have to de-rack your first wall. Okay. So there's wall number two. Now what we've created here is I've showed you how to do an inside corner. All right. I formed an inside corner. And now here now, this is all you have for an outside corner on an exterior wall. All right. Just have one stud just like this on the outside. Now we're going to build about a 20 foot wall, a 20 foot section of wall, which is going to come right in and butt into the end of this wall number two. Okay, so to get my measurements for wall number wall number four here, I'm going to do the same thing. I can put my tape right up against the bottom, and I can measure the whole way down. Now you'll notice here we have a uh, a six foot sliding glass door here. And we're going to measure all the way down. And you'll see down here now, I've got another wall here. Wall number five is going to be right over here, going this way, coming towards me. So what we're going to do again now is we're going to go past wall number five, three and a half inches, so that when we put wall number five in, it will butt into a nice nailer in the corner that we haven't already pre-installed in wall number four. So we're going to go past the wall line three and a half Guess what? Two by fours are only 16 feet long. All right? They're not 23 foot, eight and three quarter of an inch long. So what we're going to do, whenever your wall is longer than 16 feet, what you do is you start with just building a 16 foot wall, install it, and once it's installed, then you'll measure off the end of that 16 foot wall to the end of your wall. All right? We're, and essentially, we're going to be building 23 foot eight and three quarter inches of wall, but we have to do it in two sections of wall. So, because we're over 16 feet. So Mark's going to cut us a white plate and a green plate, 16 foot, make sure they're even. We're going to build that section of wall first, install it just like we did wall one and two, and then we'll be back to show you how we're going to finish this wall.